the last instruction the last instruction because now we can see very clearly that we have three instructions that are going to be used of you to build a temple you go home you meet your aunt and then you you just want to make this aunt to become the temple of god that is the plan approach her tell her i love you so much even if i have no money to give you i want to give you what is more precious because that is what i tell people i tell them you know what i have no much to give you but i want to give you what is more precious i beg for your attention and then i begin i'm not talking about myself i'm not talking about my success i'm talking about the lord jesus and specifically his death burial and resurrection opening scripture with scripture and you know what i've believed in our society today and it can be different in other places we are in a pentecostal saturated environment you may need to take even one hour explaining the gospel to this person because this person has been going to that church for 15 years the heart has waxed gross but then you want to build that temple you are not going to do some shoddy work for 10 minutes and say oh you are saved amen, amen amen no you have to make sure that you take your time explain the gospel to this person until this person understands so in building that temple you are not rushing and many a times when people do things in a rush they destroy everything you know you need to have patience and then build this temple by the grace of god in a way it is required of you so that you make sure that you are building a more sure temple and not a fake salvation so you have gone you have preached the word of salvation which is carrying the testimony of jesus christ death burial and resurrection what next do you just preach and then leave you explain very well about his death burial and resurrection and then you just leave and that is what some people are fighting over today there are people who believe that you know what after you have preached that gospel to that person don't bring that person to a point of calling on the name of jesus christ what do we face i'll tell you what we face it's not a sort of infant baptism necessarily most of the time it's not a high church confirmation by an ecclesi ecclesiastical authority what we face is the sinner's prayer. And I'm here to tell you, if there's anything I've declared war on, it's that. You say, Brother Paul, yes, in the same way that infant baptism, my opinion, was the, was the golden calf of the Reformation, for the Baptists and the Evangelicals and everyone else who's followed them today, I'll tell you, that sinner's prayer has sent more people to hell than anything on the face of the earth. Sinner's prayer has sent more people to hell than anything on the face of the earth. You say, how can you say such a thing? Go with me to scripture and show me, please. I, I would love you to stand up and tell me where anyone evangelized that way. The scripture does not say that Jesus Christ came to the nation of Israel and said that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Now who would like to ask me into their hearts? I see that hand. It's not what it says. Don't you see that? And you can't substitute the work of the Spirit of God with some little method of taking a verse out of context, getting them to pray a prayer, and then popishly declaring them to be safe. And the problem is, even when we preach the gospel correctly, then we go to this thing of how to invite men that's not biblical or historical. We get them to jump through a few evangelical hoops and say yes to the appropriate questions and we popishly pronounce them to be saved. And when they believe that false religious lie given by a religious authority, then when someone comes later and tries to preach the gospel to them because they're living in the world, they won't listen. Because a religious lie has so much power. Then would you like to pray and ask Jesus to come into your heart? It'll only take five minutes. Only five minutes? Yes. Because the Bible says, but as many as received him, to them they gave 
to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe on his name. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and will dine with him and he with me. So would you like to receive Jesus? Because that's what the Bible says. Only take five minutes? Only five minutes, sure. And then afterwards, often after a person prays or is led in a prayer by the evangelist, he or she is assured that if they were sincere, then Jesus has definitely come into their heart. Because he promised he would, and if he didn't come in, he's a liar because they were sincere. I'm not saying this because I'm an angry person. I'm saying this because I'm angry because countless people are deceived. When Paul came to the church in Corinth, he did not say to them, look... You're not living like Christians, so let's go back to that one moment in your life and when you prayed that prayer, and let's see if you were sincere. No, he said this, test yourselves, examine yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Because I want you to know, my friend, salvation is by faith alone. It is a work of God. It is a grace upon grace upon grace. But the evidence of conversion is not just your examination of your sincerity at the moment of your conversion. It is the ongoing fruit in your life. It is the ongoing fruit in your life. Just recently there's a guy who wrote to me. And this guy said he wants to come to church. And then he went further telling me, you know what? I like how you people are doing soul winning. I am also saved by faith alone. But I don't agree with you people when you tell people to confess unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he told me, that will be wax. So you people are telling people that salvation is by faith alone. But then you conclude with wax. So then I went further sharing with him the scriptures that prove unto us that after you have gone and then you've shared the gospel unto this person, you have to allow this person to call on the name of the Lord for salvation. And then this guy got angry, called me a false prophet. In fact, he went further and said that this is a cult. He called this one a weringa, a weringa, I don't know, a weringa knight or a weringa word cult. And all of you are a weringa knights. And he even went further warning you that you should wake up and run away immediately. Just because I explained to him that, you know what, I don't believe that after I've preached to this person A, I've shown him what the Bible says concerning death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and how he's the only one who can save, then tell this person, bye. You have not finished. Even after you have roofed, you've put everything there. You need to do what is called finishing. If you start making a cake, that is not even attractive without that icing. So then you are building a temple whereby you have to make sure that everything is done completely. And what is it? After you've built that temple, allow this person to call on the name of the Lord for salvation. Because you've been speaking unto him about salvation, Jesus being the only one who is Savior. Then the question will be, so what then am I supposed to do now? Look down to verses 9, Romans 10. Romans 10, <clears throat> Romans 10 verse 9, then we'll be done. We'll read only one scripture after that. Romans 10 verse 9. The Bible says that if thou, keep note of that, the word if means if you. It's like, conditional isn't it yeah so you can't just tell me okay i'm not willing to do what that romans then is saying and then ah, no says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus for those of you who are still new to the faith this scripture is not saying if you make jesus your lord because the fake gospel outside there which builds fake temples teaches saying you have to make jesus you are Lord. You cannot make Jesus Lord. Jesus is Lord forever. He's Lord forever. Who are you to make him Lord? He's Lord forever. But then the Bible is saying, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, another reason or another correction is not saying give your life to Jesus. Nowhere the Bible says for you to be saved, you have to give your life to Jesus. No, the Bible teaches that it is Jesus who gave his life 
for me and you. Do you know what it means to give life? To die for someone. To lay down your life for someone. If I tell my wife, I have given my life for you, do you know what I'm telling my wife? I have sacrificed my life for you. I'm willing to do anything in my power for your goodness, for your safety, for your security. That means I'm going to go through all the problems, all the hassles, all the struggles to make sure you are safe. Nothing is touching you. So when you hear them telling you, come and give your life to Jesus, they are telling you, come and sacrifice your life for Jesus. It's like you are the one going to die for Jesus. But then the truth of the scriptures is, it is Jesus who gave his life for us. I thought I should point out that so that we don't get confused when we hear these terms in the streets whereby someone tells you, I gave my life to Jesus. That is works based salvation. But the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto so the temple you are building has to come to a point of using the mouth to confess Jesus the Lord. Without that, I find it so hard to tell if this person believed. But then I tell you, this is a very controversial subject today. We have a group of believers who are saying it is not a must to confess. Does the Bible contradict itself? No. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus, you shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt not go to hell. Verses 10 says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For whosoever, mark this, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, confessing and calling upon is just a, a you know, is just a proof of what is in your heart. Because I've encountered people who hear the gospel, but when it's about confessing, they say, I don't want. That means they still have trouble believing in the testimony given unto them. But I've heard people that are saying, hey, quickly, I want to believe. I want to call on the name of the Lord for my salvation. That means, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth has no problem speaking. And so the Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then it goes on explaining, how then shall they, how, how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? So, Definitely, the end is the end. The end point of building a temple, a human temple, ends with one calling on the name of the Lord. Because the Bible says, "Whosoever shall call." Then it's like, "How shall they call on whom they have not believed?" So before you leave this person as a believer, you want to make sure that this person has willingly called on the name of Jesus Christ for salvation. Proving that, hey, Jesus, you are the only one that has the power to save me. Therefore, I trust in your salvation. But then if you leave, you know, we've had people in the street saying, you know what? I have believed. I'm like, when I started out talking to you, you told me that it's about the commandments. And that is what you knew. Now I've given you the version of the Bible. It's only about believing. And then from nowhere, before you call on the name of the Lord, you tell me, I have believed. And then you start laughing. Have you not encountered them? You give them the word and then later they just start laughing. Especially when you tell them, now look, you need to call on the name of the Lord for your salvation. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Others go even further faking. Say, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> and then it's like, I don't want those things. I've had even others plainly telling me, 
in the middle of it i don't want those things it simply means there's a problem in here so when we have people opposing this gospel even to a point of just saying that people must not confess you know what i call them unfaithful preachers unfaithful builders because when you have an opportunity to speak to one who is not saved when you start from step one of goi then you get to step two of giving the word of the salvation the gospel of truth you have to be a faithful preacher to bring this person to a point of calling on the name of the lord failure to that would you say you build a temple are you going to walk around saying i build a temple 